Hello and welcome to Qualys Pro Tips. Today I'm talking about the Qualys app called Software as a Service Detection and Response, or SAS DR. Qualys SAS DR is now a three-year-old product, and it doesn't seem to get the attention or promotion like VMDR, Total Cloud, and even policy compliance, despite filling an important gap in SAS security assessment offerings that are out there. SAS DR is used to conduct security assessments of SAS products for configurations matching up against CIS benchmarks and vendor best practices. The purpose of this video is to walk through the configuration of SAS DR to evaluate Microsoft 365 against the Azure AD best practices, Microsoft 365 best practices, and the CIS Microsoft 365 Foundations benchmark. I'll go through the SAS DR configuration using a modified set of instructions I created that's based on what Qualys provides, but with less confusion and better explanations. Now, if you get value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any video ideas or questions about working with Qualys, post that in a comment below and I'll do my best to help you out. Now let's get started. Note that while this video is only about Qualys SAS DR with Microsoft 365, SAS DR does support other services like Salesforce, Zoom, and Google Workspace. Qualys also claims support for Slack and Dropbox, but while you can apparently configure a connector for those two services, they don't have any associated policies listed, so I don't know what good it'll do to configure a connector for them. For this walkthrough, I'm using a trial of Microsoft 365 Business Standard, so I won't be able to evaluate everything Qualys will try to check for, but this will at least show how to get Qualys integrated and provide a good idea of the capabilities SAS DR has. Most of the benefits of SAS DR will be seen if you're using a Microsoft 365 E3 or E5 subscription. From this point in the video, I'll be following instructions I created which are loosely based on the Qualys instructions located here. Other instructions provided by Qualys I found to be more confusing and more complicated to execute. I wrote up my own instruction guide with additional details and screenshots to use for future deployments. A link to the instructions is available in the description below. I'll display the instructions side by side with the browser so you can follow along. We'll first be creating a couple of new users that will be used with the Qualys SaaS product. The second user is not one that needs to remain, but is only used to activate the required features for the first user. So here in our Azure portal, we're gonna go ahead and create the two users. So we'll go down to the Create Azure Users instructions here. We'll go to New User, Create New User. We're gonna take from the first example here. Make sure we copy out the password and save that to a separate document. Populate any of the properties for the account as required by your business. And we're gonna add the two roles here. Global reader. Privilege role administrator. Go ahead and create. There we go. And another new user. And we're going to take the second example name here. Copy out the password to pass that on to the Qualys administrator. And we're going to add global administrator role to this user. And there we go. Next, we'll be deploying the Qualys application into Azure. So this is gonna require us to go back to Qualys. And on the Home tab, down here, we'll see a download PowerShell module. So we wanna download that. In the Azure portal, make sure you're logged in with a global administrator account. And we're gonna open up the Azure Cloud Shell. And if it asks you for Bash or PowerShell, go ahead and select Bash. And then we're going to go ahead and create our storage. So we're selecting the subscription here and creating storage. We're going to type out DF. I'm going to copy out the storage account name and we're going to search for that up here. And then we're going to go to file shares and open up the file share and upload the Qualys Azure setup file that we downloaded from Qualys. Drag it in. 
There we go. And upload. We go CD Cloud Drive. We have Qualys Azure set up zip file there. So now we'll unzip. Now we'll run the installation script. And from this point, we start plugging in information about our Microsoft 365 domain. So this will be using account number one that you created before, or user number one. So first we put in the domain name. And for the SharePoint domain, I don't have anything, or if yours is the same, you just hit enter. And now we put in the full email address for that user number one and the password. Next, we're selecting the platform that we're using. And now we're looking for the, the subscription ID, which is located here. And then we'll be selecting the region that we'll be deploying to. In my case, it's East US. And from this point forward, it'll take about 15 minutes or so, 10 to 15 minutes for it to create all the resources and everything necessary. And now that the setup is done, we have the core information needed for the Qualys administrator. So we want to copy out this data right here and have that available for them in a separate document. And now we can move on to creating the Qualys SAS DR connector. Back in Qualys, we're going to the SAS detection and response application. We're at our create a Qualys SAS connector instructions here. And we'll be going over to the configuration tab and creating a connector. We're selecting Office 365. We're going to give it a name. Let's name it Test Connector. And then we need to enter all the information that was provided via Azure. And next we're going to click Test PowerShell. And we have a successful test connection. And now we hit Create Connector. And this is going to prompt for a Microsoft login. We're going to select Use Another Account. And we're going to put in user number two that we created before. The full email address. And what we'll be doing is giving the Qualys SAS DRV1 application permissions to have access and the ability to do all these items here. We'll click Accept. And once this is complete, we'll be taken back to the Qualys UI. And there we go. We have our test connector and a pending status. And if we click on the connector, we'll see all the different check types that Qualys will be doing. Clicking on refresh periodically will show you the different successes or what's queued or even what has errors. So if we go back now and we look at the dashboard, we can see what information it offers. Honestly, it's nothing useful, perhaps because I don't have a E3 or E5 subscription. We look at the directory, nothing here. We got a couple of things regarding the groups. Under resources, there's nothing here for me. Under policy, these are the different policies that Qualys offers. Here's every control together. It's very similar to some degree as what Total Cloud has for cloud security. If we go to monitor, here's all the controls that have been evaluated so far on a pass, fail, or error status. Response, nothing here. On the reports tab, you can see I created a report earlier just to test it out. They allow to create a report for almost all of the supported applications. Uh, and I say that because Slack and Dropbox are here. So they support a report option for them, but they don't have any controls to find. So I don't know what the report's going to actually provide. If you want to see the actual report, I'll go ahead and download the one I ran before. And this gives you an idea of the Office 365 report that they have. Nothing too detailed. It gives you some basic charts regarding pass, fails, and errors. 
It gives you a list of all the controls that were evaluated and their status as well. It's not providing any detailed information regarding what actually failed, what the actual check was. You'd have to dig into the UI to drill down a bit. Even the CSV report does not provide any sort of evidence detail to show you what actual configuration failed. So where does SASDR fall short? There's a number of notable observations I've found so far while testing this product. While this video isn't meant to be a review or deep dive into the use of the product, SASDR does come across as being an incomplete product, especially given that it's three years old. The connector doesn't seem to have a timeout period. It will remain in a pending state if any of the check types aren't able to be checked. While the connector is in a pending state, there's no way to manage the connector, either to force stop the current synchronization process, edit the connector, or delete the connector. While the connector is in a pending state, even if you delete the Azure resources and the user accounts associated with SASDR, the connector can remain in a pending state for many more hours. I'll assume this is because the check types that are not yet complete are configured not to check too often as not to hammer Azure with connection attempts. While Qualys appears to have all the CIS Microsoft 365 Foundation's benchmark controls, it makes no attempt to provide any way to let you see only those controls that pertain to the four types of 365 Enterprise E3 and E5 subscription types. It's all or none. That means unless you have an E5 Level 2 subscription, any failed controls you see in the Qualys portal or in a SASDR report will be useless. Qualys provides CIDs for all the controls, but doesn't provide a reference control number back to the original CIS benchmark like they do in their policy compliance app. Qualys claims they support Slack and Dropbox, and do appear to have a reporting option for them, but don't have any controls to find for them, so the reports will show nothing. I also have two recommendations regarding the Qualys Azure accounts. If you do not intend to use the automated remediation feature of SASDR, remove the Privileged Role Administrator role from user number one after you create the connector. It's an excessive role to have assigned to a service account if it will not be used and monitored. Delete user number two after you create the connector. It doesn't appear to be needed at any point after the connector is created and seems to only exist to let the Qualys administrator approve access for user number one using user number two without involving the Azure administrator again. To wrap this up, SASDR for Microsoft 365 is a great idea, but the execution falls a bit short. Luckily, it can still work well enough if you take some extra steps in the process, such as taking a CSV report and aligning it yourself to the CIS benchmarks to determine which controls pertain to your subscription type, assuming you have an E3 or E5 license. I wouldn't rely on the Qualys portal to display charts and information that would be useful on their own, since it's not breaking down the information needed. And that's the end of this video. I hope it was informative. Stay tuned for more videos to come. Cheers, everybody.